it would have been a stretch of the truth to describe the Emperor Pachacutec as having been well-respected. Well-loved, perhaps, as his trusting and forgiving nature meant that his vassals often found that they had a good friend and ally in the Emperor, an ally, moreover, who was quite easily manipulated. But unfortunately for the Emperor, he has died, and in his passing unleashed a war upon the nation. The rumors abounding Empress Cusi's illegitimacy have prompted his younger daughter, Duchess Francisca, to rise up in revolt, and his sister, Duchess Maria, has moved in from the outskirts of the Empire to claim the throne for herself. The Empire of Tawantinsiu is aflame. Welcome back to We Play Games, I'm Walker, and here we are in CK3 After the End, about to play The Heart of Martine, which is going to be the first episode in our CK3 series here in South America. So this is CK3 After the End. This is a total conversion mod for CK3. Some sort of apocalyptic event occurred and now there's knights in the new world. There's a lot of lore involved and I'm doing lore videos simultaneously with this. I'll put some links down below in case you want to learn some more. But we are playing with Duke Martin within the Empire of Tawantinsiu. This is the indigenous name for the Inca Empire, and it does describe the state that has re-emerged here. Because you can see by just checking on your faiths and your cultures that the Quechua culture and the Inti faith are dominant within the empire itself. So the indigenous people of the world here, especially in the Atacama and here along the Andes, have used their position to re-emerge as power centers in the aftermath of the event. As a result of the re-emergence of indigenous people and the reassertion of indigenous power, some of the local power structures had to find ways to survive. And so our character, Duke Martin, is actually a member of the Hoihe Punko Church, which is a Catholic offshoot, but it's a Catholic offshoot that actually has the same head of faith, the Wilak Umu, as the Inti faith here, which creates like a, an interesting syncretic religion. And that's something that you see a lot in CK3 after the end. There's just like a lot of interesting demographic and social and cultural changes that get unleashed by the event, by the apocalypse. But we are experiencing a potential apocalypse right now. For those of you who are familiar with the history of Tawantinsiu, you'll know that Francisco Pizarro actually invaded the Inca Empire in the middle of a civil war. And so we don't know for sure if this is the only civil war that Tawantinsiu has experienced since its refoundation, but I like to believe that it is because I think that would really cast a, a psychological pall over this world. So our character, Duke Martin, he's a Jorge Punko church character, but he has a very high martial score. And so what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to marry the Empress Kusi, as we have discovered that we've fallen madly in love with the Empress Kusi during this war, and hopefully we can get her to reciprocate those feelings. Whether this turns into a, a romantic comedy or just a, a cultural epic love poem or into a Shakespearean tragedy is going to be something that the game is going to tell us. Because we are at war with a, a 21 intrigue character, so if the AI wants to do some assassinating, they probably can get away with it. But we are going to do some brawling. So Duke Martin has spent his life in service to the crown and has become a capable overseer over the years, but now is the time for conflict. Now is the time for him to prove himself worthy of Kusi's heart. And so we're going to go here and click Chivalry Focus, but we're also going to reset our perks. And then we're just going to pick up a bunch of the Gallant Tree. The Gallant Tree should help us get marriage with Empress Kusi, maybe romance her, but more importantly, this is going to get us some nice bonuses in terms of military stuff. And uh, we're fighting against a very scary political enemy over here, the King Juan Carlos. He's Pachamamist, which is another one of these smaller faiths within the Empire of Tawantinsiu, but he's 19 military, 17 prowess. This guy is an absolute unit and we're going to need every bonus we can get. We're also going to go ahead and just marry off our illegitimate children. I, I think it's a, a nice way to send them off into the world. Because Duke Martin, unlike some of the other characters here, being stubborn as he is, he's not going to dismiss his illegitimate children from court. He does keep them with him. And then we're going to go ahead and just offer to join our liege's war here. We're going to do that a couple of times. And then Empress Kusi hopefully will, will hate us a little less. If we can become friends, then that's our foot in the door. He may be one of the protagonists of this story here, but this is this is a, a spooky dude. 
Oh, but we'll go ahead and we'll write a love poem. So Duke Martin is going to begin his romance of the Empress Cousy by writing her love poem. Now Duke Martin unfortunately does not know Quechua yet, so he's going to have to write a love poem to the Empress Cousy in a, a different language. But maybe we'll learn Quechua after this. That might be fun. We're going to go ahead and just raise our troops. It's going to be pretty expensive to fight this war, but... You know, if we can win some battles and capture some people, then maybe we can make this war profitable. So Duke Martin is going to take off towards the south to try to catch the Duchess Francisca's troops. If we can fight these rebels one by one, it will make our lives a lot easier. Oh boy. All right, so the uh, the rebels have taken our bait and they are trying to attack us here. Now, fortunately, we are defending in these desert mountains, so hopefully we have enough resources to, to win this fight. Oh boy. Yeah, it's going to be a real knockdown drag out but it does look like the massive advantage we had from defending a river crossing and so on and so forth is what we needed to win the battle some of our counselors died along the way that's the first big victory here for this uh for kusi over the the rebellion so let's see what we can do we've actually met up with the royal army so now we have some reinforcements we'll see if we can uh get them to follow us now all right yeah, Francisca's cause is looking pretty destroyed down here. So if we can defeat Francisca, then we should be ha able to, to push back the aunt. Oh no, are we going to be too late to, to help the royal army here against the rebels? Oh yeah, we're just, just a little too late, but we did manage to follow it up and attack Juan Carlos. I like to envision that this is Duke Martin, you know, branching out. He had been known as an overseer initially, but now he's proving himself as a, a warrior and a commander during this time of conflict. And it is exactly that proving that causes the Empress Kusi to actually, you know, start returning his phone calls. As up until now, it was unclear if Duke Martin even deserved his space on the council. He does only have 12 stewardship after all. And there it is, Francisca has been defeated. All right, so it looks like our romance scheme has finally fired. So we'll go ahead and say we're coming for her. And now Empress Kusi and Martine are soulmates. So we're gonna go ahead and arrange a marriage here. And because we're soulmates, she'll even accept a patrilineal marriage, which means that we know that from here on out, the empire is probably going to be ruled by Hoihei Punko characters. We are not going to be playing in Tawantinsu probably immediately. We're going to move around. But I think it is going to be fun to set up Hoihei Punko characters in charge of Tawantinsu, because that'll give them the ability to potentially do a firm unity with the Inti hierarchy, or failing that, break off from Inti hierarchy. Now that we've married Empress Kusi, let's go ahead and try to in Quechua, I think it would be useful to, to know the royal language. Oh, and we even found Oswaldo, a poet, to potentially serve as our linguist and teacher. That's that's pretty cool, because we would like to become a poet with Martin if we can. I think that would be fun. Oh, and we have a daughter and heir now, Carmen Farfan. And now the newly throned Emperor Martin is going to go try to break off some of these rebels here, but whoa, 23 prowess. Well, the 23 prowess wasn't enough to save them in that battle, but that was pretty scary for just a moment. With the war finally rounding down, I think we're going to go ahead and switch over to wealth focus. We're just going to need a lot of money, given that we are going to burn up all of it trying to fight Kusi's wars here. And there it is. After six long years of war, the Empress Kusi finally has secured her position on the throne. So here, Martin, that was really his first main goal, was to marry the Empress and help her secure her position. But we're going to see how he does as the Emperor here, because it's one one thing to win a crown, right? And it's quite another thing to keep it. So we'll go to our wife and offer increased obligations. It's going to marginally increase our, our tax income for the emperor, but I want to make sure that whoever succeeds us here is a little powerful, right? We want to have a, a good succession for our Farfan dynasty now. Oh, we can buy a, a nice gift for our wife? Sure, yeah, we'll do it. I mean, what's the point of getting money if you're not going to spend it on her? He's going to, it looks like he's going to have a nice, a nice little life here. He's got a puppy. Also his eldest son, uh, the illegitimate Martin, who he married off to a princess in Mesopotamia. That princess is now the heir to the kingdom. And so we may end up where our illegitimate children actually integrate into the royal families in other parts of the world. That would be really fun. 
I would like to have a, some sort of narrative reason to move to another area, and having a, an offshoot part of our family there seems like a great way to do it. But we'll move around wherever the, the most interesting characters are. I think that's generally the way to, to keep the game spicy, and it'll let us create some, some fun empires. So now King Luciano, the, uh, the king of Mesopotamia, whose eldest daughter is married to our eldest son, has become our friend. So we just did a, a nice little investment thing, and I think that's cool, right? You have these personal relationships that develop into long-term alliances, or vice versa. Oh, war has been declared on Kusi. It looks like Francisca is back at it, but I think this time it should be a pretty easy win. Yeah, because Francisca did not get any allies this time. Well, obviously Snoopy is going to join me at the, uh, the council meeting. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing! We got- it's great to bring your dog to the council meeting. That's the- the real lesson here. And Francisca's troops are defeated yet again. Maybe we should just, like, march over to her capital, try to capture her in battle, and then just, uh, accidentally let her die. Oh no, we're sick? Well, we're gonna have to send out for a physician. Oh, but right on time, we actually found a pretty good one. Although, boy, we're gonna have to, uh, borrow some money from our wife, I think. All right, we have defeated Francisca. Excellent. Oh no, and Kusi is being attacked yet again. I mean, this is a very small uprising. It's only 1,500 troops. I guess we'll we'll let we'll let her fight this one on her own because we do need money pretty badly, and we're not gonna get there spending it, you know, four gold per month. No, Ketra Ketra is not the beyond our capabilities. We can learn it. Let's just uh let's just learn language from Kusi herself. That, that'll work a little better, right? Excuse me, we did not get involved in this war for a particular reason. I didn't want you sieging us down and getting involved in this. Good lord. All right, fine. We will join the war. Oh, we have a second daughter, Herminia. Rebels coming all the way out here just to siege us down. Ooh, militant constitutionalists. All right, so the, the Americanists are going to start Great Holy Wars. We're going to check in on North America every once in a while as things look like they're developing over there. The main goal, of course, being to play in South America. But if there's a really big war over here, or if the Holy Columbian Confederacy disintegrates or something like that, we'll, we'll pop in and see what's going on. Ooh, we're going to go ahead and petition our liege to settle our debt. Increasing our feudal levies is probably worth 102 gold. No, Ketra is not beyond my abilities. We can learn it. Oh my god. This is the the real struggle for Martine here, is that he fell in love with Kusi and he wrote her poetry and she never learned his language and he struggled desperately to learn hers. Oh, we have a third daughter. Wow. So there's going to be quite a, uh, a succession here, depending on how this goes. Well, you know, at least Carmen learned Quechua. That's useful for her if she's going to be the, the next empress. Our Quechua language teacher is out here, and we're still we're still trying really hard, but Oswaldo is actually going to write an artifact for us and become our best friend, which is pretty cool. No, Quechua! Why do you keep doing this? Fourth time's the charm. Listen, Martine's 54 years old. Learning a new language at that age is very difficult. We don't need to come up with any other excuses than that. It's not critical if we have a, a son or not, but if we have only daughters, then our partition inheritance is going to guarantee that we just have like a lot of rulers down here. Whereas if we have uh, just one son, then that would be a pretty tight succession. <laughs> the Empress Kuzi has written us a, a very, very surreal kind of poem, but you know, that's the sort of thing that I think defines the heart of Martine and the, the love between him and, and the Empress Kusi. This is the silliest thing I've ever read, but... It is dreadfully sweet. Oh, and we have a newborn son, Jorge. Carmen is probably going to end up being a better potential ruler than Jorge anyway, because she's already patient and generous. But, you know, sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles. Oh boy, finally, after, what, like a decade, we finally learned Quechua language. And now, Kusi has declared war on Grand Mayor of Lima. So Lima, for those of you who are not familiar with it, the history of Peru, Lima was actually founded by the Spanish. So when the Spanish and Francisco Pizarro conquered the Tawantinsiu in the, the first go-round, they found that Cusco was simply impossible to keep resupplied very, very easily, and so they founded the city of Lima on the coast. And so having Lima independent from Tawantinsiu, I, I think is nice to highlight that little political difference. 
And of course it gives the future rulers of Tawantinsu something to do, because they are going to want somewhere to expand, and I think that's a good way for them to go. Oh, it looks like Francisca has attempted to have Maria assassinated, although she did die after a botched treatment, so it didn't really matter if there was an assassination attempt or not. Ah, Jorge has become curious. Well, in that case, we'll set him up with a learning education, and hopefully you can pick up a little bit of learning here off of our best friend and court tutor. So we have an opportunity here to get a cool painting for the Empress. I think that would be fun. Maybe it'll be a painting of a battle from the uh, the Civil War. Yeah, she liked it. Cool. Ooh, so the, the Industrious Faith has also unlocked Grey and Holy Wars. So there are going to probably be some pretty big wars going on up here in due time. Oh, looks like there's already a Civil War in the, uh, the HCC. And it looks like it's one where the Civil War side might win. Holy mackerel. Oh no! Rufinia, one of our daughters, has drowned. Oh man, that's also going to be really bad for our stress, but you know, we're going to take that as an opportunity to just become a confider and just be even more invested in, in Kusi here. But now in our later years, Duke Martin, or now Emperor Martin, has become a wise man. Now that we've learned a little bit about pedagogy, we're going to go ahead and start tutoring Jorge one-on-one. -on -one. We don't know if, if we're actually going to live long enough for Jorge to become an adult, but that's okay. If, if Martin can leave a lasting impression on the, the young son, then that's good enough. And now we're just going to go ahead and use all the uh, secrets that we've been building up by, by spying on the capital, blackmail a bunch of people, and just use golden obligations to pull all their money to us. So by the time we die, we will make sure that Emperor Martin uses his position at court to advance the, the cause of his family, not just by marrying into the, the royal family, but also just by terrorizing some of the, the vassals here. But you know, whether or not this earned Martin any friends in the Empire, just, you know, spying on people and blackmailing them. What, the result of it was pretty undeniable. Money flowed into his treasury. Well, Jorge at least is going to turn out to be a very effective diplomat and probably a pretty effective learning character as well. Although uh, that one intrigue does mean that his, his Empire is going to rely a lot on people liking him. He's over here trusting, compassionate, curious. Meanwhile, in the background, I think I see what the act three of this this tragedy is actually going to end up being. Martin, he's a he's a lustful character and he's unwilling to change in that regards. And so now, despite getting everything he ever wanted and having a potentially secure heir to the throne here, we've begun a seduction chain against Princess Mercedes, the daughter of King Juan Carlos. So that might provoke like a, a very, very end of life civil war if we annoy the right the right people. But in the meantime, Tawantinsu really has been expanding. You can see that the stability that we've been able to afford the Empire has allowed the AI to really go out and grab some land. Lima is under thumb, Pando is under thumb, and so we can see how far the uh, the Empire develops and also what direction it develops on religiously because of course, you know, we our child right now is Hoihei Punko, but that might not be true in a a decade. All right, so we went out on a hunt and we've encountered a rampaging boar. I think it would be really fun here for Martin to just go out in a blaze of glory and die to this boar. So let's go ahead and see what happens. We slew the beast. All right, that was that was a hell of a thing. And there it is, the 12th of July, 2694. Emperor Martin has finally died. So Duke Jorge is going to take over now as the uh, the new head of the family. Although the, this family is, of course, subordinate still to the Empress Kusi. So we'll see how that turns out. So with the passing of Duke Martin and now the succession for Duke Jorge, it looks like things are stable within the Empire. But we'll see, because it does look like actually Martin is expecting another child out here with the, uh, the Princess Mercedes, who has quickly been married off to someone, but that is not her husband's child. That's Martin's. So 
that'll introduce a, another succession crisis, maybe. But we'll see that play out in Tom and Tensiu from the outside. I think we're going to bounce over probably somewhere near Brazil, just so we can pressure them. Maybe we'll play inside, maybe we'll play outside, but I want to see if we can make Brazil break. Because I think if you can do enough damage to it, my understanding is that it does disintegrate. And so I would like us to include as part of this South America campaign the disintegration of, and then perhaps refounding of Brazil. That might be easier if we were to found like a nomadic kingdom in the Cerrado or something like that, or maybe a nomadic kingdom in La Plata. But our uh, our distaff family members over in Nova Rutania actually got kicked out of power, and so we're not going to be able to play as them. We could still play as the Nova Rutania, but they've converted, and so there's like a lot of cursed religion border war going on in here right now. But that's that's sort of the fun of CK3 after the end, is that the, the setup is the same, but the way the world evolves is wildly different. All right, that's uh, episode one, The Heart of Martine, here in our CK3 After the End South America campaign. That's Walker. Take care.